Nostalgia, the land I call my home. Sing it with me like Hugh Jackman. Nostalgia, nostalgia. Why is this so accurate? Gia. Anyway, I can't. I can't keep going forever. Will you all run away? Okay, there we go. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has that ADHD thing where like you can't you know, sing half a lyric, you gotta finish the lyric. Hey, it's me, uh, welcome back to my show <laughs> where I combine Princess Diaries with the term nostalgia to discuss something in my swirly chair today. Um, I, you all have nostalgia. We all have nostalgia and we gotta do something about it. Nostalgia is that like immense, intense feeling of craving something from the past that like you can never get back and the feeling is like so powerful at least for me like it's deep deep desire want and you know sadness tied with gratitude and joy and contentment and it's just this weird mix of a feeling um and I was thinking about it because we're getting old we're always getting older I think I was talking to my little brother and I say little brother he's 20 two or 23. Is he 23? No, he'll be 23 on our anniversary. Yikes. That's a story. We got married on his birthday, not by like, you know, malicious choice. We were just like, we need a weekend in the fall. And how about this day? And he was like, that's my birthday. And I was like, cool. And then we got him a birthday cake at our birthday or at our wedding. So it was fine. Anyway, talking to him younger brother I should say not littler brother and we were just discussing how when you grow up as an adult it really feels like your your whole or at least early 20s and 30s adulthood seems to be healing the childhood and trying to return to the sense of curiosity and playfulness and the things that we left behind as children and it's just been really prominent recently so we're going to chat about it today just a little it's going to be good so if you will uh think about entering into i don't know your safe place as a kid like your i don't know time machine back with me journey with me to something that made you feel like this is a moment where i am just like a little kid having fun being safe and what what are some of those moments that you were like nostalgic for now for me I go back to being at my friend's house on my belly playing with beads like we would bead jewelry on the carpet and the little beads would get stuck in the fibers of the carpet and we have to like fish them out while we're watching like a Disney Channel show like Hannah Montana because she had Disney Channel and I did not or like a movie like a Disney movie on a Friday night or a warm day in the summertime. And then we'd finish up our beading craft and go outside for a swim or a night swim where we put glow sticks in the pool. So much fun. And I just think of like those memories when I think of like happy moments in childhood. It was like spent with friends, doing an artistic activity, being outside and yeah, just like enjoying sunshine and happiness. And I get really sad when I think about how old I am, not in a negative way, but in the like, oh man, like it's not necessarily normal anymore for a grown woman to just like lay on her stomach and be jewelry watching Disney Channel. I still do it sometimes when I'm chasing nostalgia, but it's just one of those things. It's like some of those moments you can't have back you can't have any of those moments back once they're gone but you can recreate them and kind of heal that inner child like desire to have um some of that interaction and I think about that too with like biking has always been one of my favorite things just like not you know for sport or anything or for any real reason just like cycling around a neighborhood going across a road going up somewhere to get ice cream and every time I hop on a bike especially in the summer I just like feel a little, little India being like, woohoo, I feel good. <laughs> like life is good. Um, listening to Coldplay feels nostalgic. I used to sneak out of my room and sit on our roof growing up. Um, cause my bedroom, my childhood bedroom, like was right there and it was like the roof right out of it. 
So I'd sometimes sneak out there, sit on the roof with my hot pink MP3 player, headphones in and listen to like Viva La Vida by Coldplay and just cry and be like, oh, life is so beautiful and complex. At the age of 14, I know such things, <laughs> like, but it's so good. And I feel nostalgia when I think of those things. So uh, we're chatting about a couple things that I still like, even though I'm an adult, um, that I liked as a kid and how some of these things last. And then I want to discuss a new topic, newer topic. It's called a dopamine menu. And I think it's really interesting when we're thinking about healing your inner child. Uh, and I want to discuss it a little bit today. So would you join me? Would you join me on this crazy ride? Okay. Theme song. Also, what do we think about these mics? You may have noticed my sound quality used to be one way, now it's a different way. I like these better for like my user experience, but they are way less quality than the other fancier ones we have. And sometimes it's just easier to like hold this thing or clip it on, but I do like, I miss the nice podcast sound that the other ones gave. So maybe I'll have to go back. Let me know what we think about these. They're Bluetooth microphones and they connect to my phone, which is kind of handy. Okay, sorry if you heard that coffee swallow. I made a homemade honey iced latte today with oat milk. It's good. All right. So, like I mentioned, I have discussed this with therapists before, I've discussed this with my husband, with friends, and I think the consensus is together <laughs> that, like, we do spend so much time, you know, after our peak developmental stages of 18 through 22, like the college years you know, after that, I feel like we're just trying to heal the inner child. And I have a theory and I'm not, you know, someone who studies like cognitive development or anthropology, even though, again, I would love to get a master's in anthropology, but what, it, what kind of job does that get you? I don't know, but I, not everything is about a job. I should just correct myself. Not every degree is to get you a new job. Some things you just learn for the sake of learning. Anyway, I think when we are little, we're instantly trained to jump into an institutional setting with school. It's like, okay, now we're going to sit. You're like four. Okay. Time to sit down at a desk all day and do structured tasks inside away from nature with probably little to no windows. So they don't distract you. And then you grow up and then from four until 18, you know, you're in school for like 12 years maybe a little bit more, I guess, doing all this stuff. We're learning, we're preparing for the real world. We're learning math and science and history and nature. And I don't mean to say that, that it's bad because you should learn all those things. But that's like the society, right? We're just like little kids playing, enjoying, being carefree, discovering the world. And then all of a sudden it's like, sit down, don't talk, don't look outside, you know, head down, do this thing that you hate, math, science, reading, whatever in a structure that's typically unhelpful, like having all this work in school, trying to stay focused with your little brain and then going home and having homework for three or four or five hours and then trying to have a social life and trying to be a part of sports and drama clubs and musical instruments and all that stuff. And we do that with our kids all the way up until they graduate from high school. And then it's like, oh, that was just like the, the basics. Now you have to go, or it's really, really highly encouraged to go to college for another four years, paying all this money that'll probably get you in debt. You may never pay it off. And then you also have to like know what you're gonna do with your life right then and there at the ripe age of 18, 17. So then people do that and then they come out of college and one of two things happens. Either they jump into a career, they love it, they feel motivated, they are content, then they have a spouse, then they have a kid, then they do the settle down, have the white picket fence house and they're like good and they're accepting of all the change happening in their life and they're content with the way the world works. Oh, my husband's calling me. One moment. Hi, honey. Hey baby, um, the scan didn't take off the double meaning. Is there like a different scan aside from the numbers card that you can send me? Let yeah. me see uh, if there is. Oh, yep. Here, I'll send it to you. Sorry about that. Thank you. I'm about to say. Cool. It. Love ya. Thank you, babe. Love you. 
Yeah, bye. Bye. We're getting Chipotle for lunch, so we gotta get those points. Okay, anyway, I feel like, yeah, one of two things happens. Someone is totally accepting of the way the world works, they're content about it, and they're okay with doing the same for their kids, and then they just kind of start the process over, right, in the next generation. Or maybe these are two extreme examples, obviously, because everyone's nuanced, but or someone goes through the similar process or maybe even a unique different one comes to a different conclusion and maybe they finish college and go, ah, that's not the career I want. I don't really know if I like this whole being an adult working until I die thing like this isn't my fulfillment. This doesn't feel like the right path for me. Maybe I need to pivot and try something else. I think for women especially, it's kind of interesting because they feel like there is so much uh, amazing freedom that we have from the matriarchs who came before us who helped us get rights to vote and to have a bank account and to have financial freedom and to work or to choose to stay home and have kids and be a homemaker. And there's so much variety in that. and I'm really grateful for it. But I also feel like there's this weird sense of, you know, hey, as a woman, you should go to college so you're educated as a plan B if you don't get married rich. Anyone else feel that way? Like, I don't know. I just feel like that was kind of the vibe with a lot of the women that I knew was like, I may or may not go to college. It's not a huge deal if I do or don't because I'm just going to get married and just want to stay home. And that's okay. But then it also felt like the ones who did choose college, there was this like feeling over the way people discussed it was like, oh yeah, that's good for now. Or you'll get that degree for a little job for now. And you can always change later when, you know, you want to be a mom. And it's kind of like, what? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I think we don't know how to handle women in society as a rule of thumb. And I think it's interesting. But I just feel like that aside, once you're done and you're in the real world kind of situation, which we also need to stop saying that phrase because we are in the real world. Like you're in college. That is the real world. It's just like the adult world, the career world, the corporate world. But I do think, yeah, once you're there, it's just kind of like, hmm, was this worth all the hype? Is this what life really is about? Is there more to life than Jesus? But even so, I, I, there we go. That's a great example. I used to say like, oh my gosh, like Jesus is the point of life. Like this is it. Like God, Jesus. Yes. Mm. And it's like, okay, yes. But then you still have to like have a job and do things. And what are you doing? And is your work tied into the kingdom of God or is it just busy work? And I, I don't know. I used to think it was so simple. Like, no, yeah, you like just doesn't matter what you do. You're going to work for the Lord. And now I think it's like, oh, it does definitely matters what we do. And you can redeem all things and should. But most adults, I don't think, think that way. They are just like, a job is a job. It pays the bills. I don't have to love it. I don't have to have a kingdom outlook on it. I don't have to agree with anything about this. I'll sell my soul for it just so I can be an adult and compete with the Joneses. I don't know. Blah! I hate being an adult sometimes. Ew. But I'm also a business professional. So it's fine. All that to say, if you find yourself in camp A and you're like, no, I'm totally cool with the way life is. I don't have any nostalgia for the past. I'm good with growing up. I'm good with starting a family. I want to be, you know, this corporate person or even just give back to my kids. I think that's all fine. But if you find yourself more in the other category of like, you know, I may or may not love my career. I do feel a lot of nostalgia. I feel this like great deep sense of things have been lost in childhood and I need to like fill that void in my life before I move forward with a job or a family or, you know, even if you have those things. I don't know. I just thought it'd be an interesting exercise to urge everyone to take a moment and say, what are some of those things that I enjoyed when I was little that I would still enjoy now? What are those like childlike things that would be healing for you to do? That would be a fun memory to try with your kids if you have kids or that would just be something that's like not the norm, not going to work, coming home, making food, watch a show, go to sleep, repeat, 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 gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss, as my younger sister would say. So I made my list of things little India would like um, did like, and still loves. So here's, here's some of mine. Number one, a good sleepover. 
I am not talking about a sleepover where we're staying at your house and you have a guest room for me. And that's, listen, that's fine if we're like peers or like we don't know each other very well, but I want a real sleepover, a one where we're sleeping on the living room floor or like passed out on the couch. We're watching Disney Channel movies, Parent Trap, High School Musical, Camp Rock. There are oh, Princess Diaries, obviously. There are cookies in the oven. We're staying up past our bedtime. We're in our comfy jam jams and we're painting our nails. I want that kind of sleepover. Loved it then, still love it now. Don't give me the guest. Oh, you can stay in the guest room. No, if we're not cuddling on the couch as best friends, what was the whole point of the sleepover? Anyway, all right, lilac and lavender. I liked these as a kid, um, little kid, like seven. And then I think I grew out of them because I thought they were too girly. And I was like, my favorite color is red for like the longest time. But now I'm like, no, I like the softer colors. I still do. I like the dresses that are that color. I think it's good for my skin tone, but I think it's just a soft, pretty feminine color. And I think I do like the purples more than I like the pinks. I said it. All right, another thing I loved as a kid, still love as an adult, Pocahontas, the Disney animated film. Now, before you cancel me, I don't really know why people, some people, I haven't seen this be a huge thing on the internet, but I haven't dug too deep. Some people on the internet are like, Disney never should have made this movie. It's a terrible racist movie. Excuse me? I don't know if I'm just like not informed, but I wholeheartedly disagree. Yes, there's a few issues with the song title that the bad guy sings. Okay, that's not okay. But it is such a good film that is so anti-racism. And yes, it glamorizes what otherwise in the real world was a very bad situation of this younger 14 year old woman being, you know, married to this white colonialist. Um, but, but I think that's the point. And it's not supposed to be a one for one of real life. Like all Disney movies, it's supposed to be a Disney movie. Like, yes, it's going to gloss over some details, but no kid is going to watch that and then believe when they're an adult oh, that was fine because it was a Disney. They, they know, they can Google. And I still love this film. I love everything about this movie. I think it's so healing and a beautiful, like way that we can learn from other cultures. It's just one of my favorite films. It's so good. Hi, baby. Sorry. You're okay. Ian's home with Chipotle. You can bring it in. Yeah. Hey, you wanna be on my podcast? Are you just recording right now? Yep. Hi, everyone. Hello. Oh, hey. Are you going to eat this while talking to people? <laughs> no, I'll wrap up in a second. Thank you. You're the best. Okay. Love you. Love you. All right. Next. <laughs> I love it. All right. Next thing I loved as a kid that I still love today. Listen, this one's very specific. DiGiorno's on a Friday night, frozen pizza, watching a movie, the vibes cooked in the oven. Another one I almost added, I should add it, I'll add it. Tostitos pepperoni pizza rolls baked in the oven. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's so good. It's like the only way to make the pizza rolls. And if they're in the microwave, they're not good. They're too squishy and it's not delicious. I think it's really good. But I don't know if it's just a Midwestern thing, but I feel like so many of our like, thank you. <laughs> I feel like so many of our friends, um, growing up, that was like the thing, like DiGiorno specifically was the pizza and baking it in the oven on a Friday night, like pizza Friday nights. It's just like very common around here. And I, I'm pretty sure like most families, I don't know, most American families. Eh. What'd be funny though, is pizza's like technically Italian, isn't it? So like, do the Italians do pizza Friday nights or are they like, no, like pizza right now, I do Next thing, ice skating, loved it then, love it now. I went recently, oh gosh, that was like over a year ago. Was it? No, it was in the winter. Oh my gosh, was it a year? I cannot remember anything. I went ice skating in the last year and a half, apparently, but I don't remember exactly when. But I wanna go again soon with a friend of mine who used to be a figure skater, and so she was like teaching me some spins. It's so fun, very nostalgic for me, very healing. Like I mentioned earlier, biking specifically to get ice cream, very childhood nostalgia for me. Sledding and seeing white snow everywhere, especially because I am a 
Christmas Eve baby. And so winter, like having a white Christmas is obviously every kid's dream, but having a white birthday, that sounded racist. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, but having a white Christmas snowy birthday the day before Christmas was really special to me. Um, and a little craft night. I love a little craft. Like, I'm not as crafty as some DIYers out there, but I love a little like sit down and paint or play with some clay or like I was painting some chairs outside in our backyard. Like those little things, a little DIY project around the house. I love a good craft. Okay. So what are those things for you? Are there things that bring you back to that nostalgia vibe and that heal a little bit of that, like, oh man, I didn't get enough of this experience as a kid. Write those out. I'd be curious if you want to comment them as well. All right, so now really quickly, I want to... Hi, Ansu. Veneca. Uh, my one listener. <laughs> Hi, Sue. And everyone else that's been involved. Well, it's literally like... I think it's like Ian's mom and his godmother who listen to the show. Thanks guys. All right, I wanted to chat about this idea of a dopamine menu because I feel like it's kind of in the same vein as, you know, childhood things we still love, but it's different. So I'm gonna read a little bit off of this blog post. It was posted kind of recently, April of 2024. It's titled, as a therapist with ADHD, here's what's on my dopamine menu. And so basically this lady, Amy Marshall, PhD, no, phys ed, no, I don't know what the letters mean. I'm thinking she's a therapist, but it just kind of like talks about what this is. I'm just going to read like a quick little excerpt. It says, everyone has coping skills and self-care habits to get them through the day. Activities we enjoy and boost our mood help our brain release dopamine, a neurotransmitter, and helps us feel pleasure and motivates us. For folks with attention deficit hyperactive disorder, ADHD... Uh, they tend to have lower levels of dopamine in our brain, so we have to work harder to tap into those happy chemicals. Um, and then it kind of says you can do like good activities to have dopamine or risky activities like roller coasters. You get that like adrenaline junkie vibe. And so obviously we want the uh, less dangerous ones you could do on any kind of day. So it talks about the idea of a dopamine menu. Basically, it's like the concept of creating a list of dopamine stimulating activities for different situations and needs. And they usually break them down to the three categories, like appetizers, entrees, and side dishes, just based on how much time you have, really. I'm not going to do that for mine, but, um, and dessert, they have dessert as well. I think it'd just be easier for me to read my list, but I like the idea of it, right? Like I like the idea of creating a list of go-to things you can do when you're not totally feeling 110% amazing and you want to like boost your mood, heal your inner child, or just have a hit of dopamine without the drugs. So I made a little list. And again, I encourage you to make your own. This is so fun. I feel like we're all just like healing. My dopamine menu as an adult, Cats, I love my cats. Spending time with them helps me feel happy. Holding them, cuddling them, good vibes, all the good vibes. Audiobooks, I prefer real books. I like the tangible, holding it, flipping the page, smelling the paper. But honestly, audiobooks have been helping me really stay focused when I do a lot of like photography editing or like have a long drive or something. I've been really in an audiobook phase this year. Um, I think I mentioned this when I was walking around New York City. I just had my audiobook playing and it was so good. It was just like so fun to have something consistently, like a story I was walking through. And then like, it's like my own virtual reality world that I kind of can get behind. Scary podcasts. I like a good true crime, not in the malicious, like, Ooh, I like, you know, murder, but I like listening to something that does have a little, like, like feeling behind it right I think that's why people watch like scary movies they want to feel something and the scary podcasts definitely keep me on edge and focused in uh, I like slime shout out to my niece Israel for making me some slime I don't have it in this room I'll show you at the end of the show but she made me rose gold slime to match my ring and blue slime that glows in the dark and I was so honored because I get to squish those and I love that uh, painting like I mentioned earlier I love a little craft hit of dopamine through painting Basically any visually artistic hobby, I don't bead as much anymore. I used to draw a ton. That was like my whole childhood. Um, but I like the ideas of like, just you start with nothing, you end up with something. 
I don't do it as much as I used to at all or should, but I would really like to get back into the visual arts. Uh, I've tried knitting before, it didn't really go so well. And this year I might try sewing. So we'll see how that goes. Biking, like I mentioned, is a good dopamine hit. Hiking is a huge one that I feel amazing after I hike. I love all of it. We just don't live anywhere where there's like trails. There's like park trails, like we can walk at the local metro park, but the nearest actual elevation is happening. Hiking trail is at least an hour away at Hocking Hills. And I mean, we just grew up here. So like, I feel like I've done it a hundred times kind of thing. So I really one day would love to live close to the mountains so we can just go hike anytime. Recipe with a music, uh, with a music, a recipe with a show or like music going, usually a show Gilmore Girls specifically in the fall with a recipe book cracked open, trying something new. I love it. Huge dopamine hit. Um, ice cream, obviously you're kind of crazy if you don't think that one's true. Watching a movie, eating some delicious snacks, munching on food. I'm a foodie, I love food. Feel so happy. Uh, nails, doing my little nails or a spa day specifically. And I've never, I say spa day, I've never gone to a spa. I've gotten massages, but I've never like, gone to a spa, um, but the spa day vibes of like, we have a little aromatherapy, essential oil diffuser going, and there's calming music, and there's a soft jazz in the background, and we're doing our yogi stretches, and we're gonna do a massage. I love all that, that's nice. And then the last thing that's kind of a weird dopamine hit, I kind of like grocery shopping, it's not like 110% on my menu because I still have to hype myself up to go to the grocery store, but I like walking around, again, AirPods in, podcast on, walking around Trader Joe's, getting some snacks, and I munch on something on the way home. It's kind of a vibe. So that's my dopamine menu for now. I'm sure it'll be evolving and changing, but I say that to also encourage you, especially as we head into the colder winter months, like, let's not be depressed this year. That's my goal. Let's not have seasonal depression and really try to have a list of go-to things that when you're feeling low, you can go, this is what I can do. The other thing is I, most of these that I mentioned personally, and as well as the therapist are solo activities so that you can do this whenever you feel sad. Of course, whenever I'm with friends, any of these activities get exponentially more exciting to me or more stimulating, but it's like not every time, you know, are people free? Are they around? So it's like when I can do so, have a list that I can do by myself, that's helpful. But when I know there's going to be community, it's that much more exciting. So I'm going to eat my Chipotle before it gets cold. Let me know what your dopamine list is. Let me know what your childhood things that you loved and still love are. And we will catch you next week on the next episode. Okay, bye!